an appliance that does something for you every day of the year. Like a toaster, an iron, or a radio. Name it, you'll find it here. We're headquarters for appliances. We can help you bring good cheer. Guys, I finished pumpkin and it was really cute. I really enjoyed it. Like it was really YA. So like a bit silly, but like in a wholesome way, I really enjoyed it. Like, so it's this sort of chubby kid in high school and he's gay and he ends up getting um, like nominated to be prom queen. And then he just rolls with it. He's like, fine, I'll just be prom queen then, shall I? Um, and his sister, is also gay and her girlfriend is also nominated but as prom king <laughs> and like basically they just sort of go through this thing and like their high school world and blah, blah blah and I really enjoyed it it was like had a really like wholesome predictable ending as well which you know sometimes you don't love but in something like this like where it's like YA and it's cute like I enjoyed it it was good so that means I have one more book left for the pop sugar reading challenge I might actually do it I might like pull it through and finish the challenge for the year and also, I found the book that I was going to read for it was Black Sun by Rebecca Ronor. So I do want to read that. I might do next year to know. But I don't actually have that book. And it would have required me to acquire it. Um, which, you know, uh, I'm against this year. I'm going to try to be a good girl and not do that anymore. And just like be like, oh, no, I want to read that and then get it right now and then blah, blah, blah. No. Okay. I've evolved. So I found something on my shelves already that will also work for the prompt which is Nevermore, The Trials of Morgan Crow. I'm pretty sure I heard about this one from Sarah at Year Two Shelf, and I'm pretty sure she loved the shit out of it. So, pretty excited. Okay, it's quite big, but it's a middle grade book, so I think I'm gonna be able to blow through it. If not, I might get the audiobook. I don't know. And then, once I'm done with that, I will have nailed the Pop Sugar Reading Challenge. I'm definitely doing the next one now. Definitely getting ready for 2022's Pop Sugar Reading Challenge. It's happening. Lol. <laughs> just had uh, like a phone meeting with Anne Wen's teacher <laughs> and, like, it's like a, a biannual like you know like teacher meeting or whatever <laughs> and he was saying oh she's lovely like she always wants to work with everyone she doesn't have anyone she doesn't want to work with she doesn't have like favorites she just loves people loves everyone <laughs> and like she talks too much <laughs> and um he was like oh her reading her reading is so good she's above where I would expect a child her age to be with regards to reading um but you know her math her math could be improved she's like we had like a a, a chat about her progress in the uh remedial math <laughs> program that you see at the minute um and I just feel sad for her I just feel sad that she's I like I I feel like this is my fault. I've given her my exact strengths and weaknesses. <laughs> and like I think um she will struggle her whole life with math just like I do and I feel sad about it, you know. Um but it, like you know, at least like he he only had glowing things to say because she, you know, she loves her teacher. She loves school. You know, when teachers they like kids who like school, don't they? You know, they like kids who come to school going, school! <laughs> so, he had glowing things to say, and that's lovely, but, um, poor Munchkin, I swear to God. <laughs> okay, so, as promised yesterday, I think I have finally finalised my top 10 books of the year list. Okay, like, uh, I started out with 35, nailed it down then to 20, and then down from there to 10. I wanted to push it again to five, but it was too hard, so I'm just going to leave it at ten, right? Okay, number ten, best book of the year, and it's Dead India by Hame Steele. So I've been going on about this book a lot lately because I sort of recently read it, and then I was on about it for January and stuff. Okay, but it's like this graphic novel, right? And it's uh, these kids that work at this haunted house fixture in a theme park. And the haunted house fixture isn't just a haunted house fixture, it's also like a portal to hell. But it's like a portal to like... You know, something that's like sort of Dante's Seven Circles of Hell. So it's like a bunch of different realms and like things keep coming through. Um, but the kids are also just sort of normal kids. So like while battling evil and doing all this crazy stuff, like one of them is also just neurodiverse and finds it hard to make friends, you know. And her best friend is this kid who's non-binary and he's like um, left his house because 
he's not getting on with his mom and he's like living secretly in the haunted house, you know, like with his dog. Um, anyway, super good. Love the crap out of it. Okay, number nine on the best books of the year. <laughs> um, is Marianne Enriquez, The Dangers of Smoking a Bed. So this is like short stories and like quite of them are like quite creepy, you know, and like a bit like sort of horror, but not like really intense horror, you know, like, um, one of them is like a story about how Barcelona is like a sort of Hotel California, <laughs> like you can never leave and it's like a bit creepy and like there's one like sounds terrible but it's not as bad as that, like about a dead baby that like keeps sort of like coming back, you know, and like finding this woman. Um, but I thought they were really well written, like it's um, translated from Spanish, I think this person is from Chile or Argentina or something. Um, but she's also written another one, another collection of these. And I think Shan read it. I can't remember if she liked it or not, but that's like on my list of things I want to get to next year. Like um, look into more of her stuff. Okay, number eight, best book of the year. Rita Hayworth and Shawshank Redemption by Stephen King. Okay, probably loads of people knew that this book was amazing. Like anyone who'd seen the movie, which I hadn't before, probably knew that this was great. But I sort of thought it was just like man book, you know, like another Rambo that like men do, you know, but it, it's so amazing. Like basically, you probably already know, but I'll tell you anyway. This guy, he's uh, sent to prison, but he's innocent. Like he's sent to prison for killing his wife, but he didn't do it. And um, he's an accountant. So he uses like his skills with accounting and taxes and stuff like that to like get in good with the guards and like manipulate the guards and like get a good position in prison. All the while, like tunneling through the walls to escape. And he's got, like, this friend as well who's, like, really hardened, you know, and, like, gets him stuff, you know, like, and get him stuff from the outside. Anyway, it's amazing. The characters are great. Like, the ending is amazing. Um, like, I feel like I'm really, like, this year, I've really come into my Stephen King phase. Like, before, I was like, oh, you know, it's okay. Like, The Stand, you know, Gunslinger, stuff like that. Like, I don't like the horror stuff, but, like, whatever. But now, like Stephen King, he's my guy. Like I've got loads of them now that I want to read for next year. Like I read loads this year. Just I'm a full Stephen King fan now. Okay, number seven, best book of the year, The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin. So this one's like um, like speculative fiction and like I think a bit like Afrofuturist potentially. So it's this idea that each of the boroughs of New York have like um, like created or like like spawned like a human avatar for themselves and um that person like has all the same attributes and everything as the borough itself but they're like a person and the reason that that has happened is because the avatar for the whole of the city of new york is like in trouble by this sort of evil like alien city avatar coming in to like take it over and like murder it or whatever so these like burrows, these people that are these burrows have to come together to like fight her. But only some of the burrows are in league with each other. There is one burrow where the evil city has like infiltrated her and like manipulated her and like turned her against the other ones. It it was good. It was weird. So weird and like hard to wrap your mind around. But I absolutely loved how the characteristics of the people match their burrow so well and like how like cleverly constructed it all was also the evil alien city was fucking bomb so ish okay number six best book of the year okay prince's pen by horatio claire so this is one of those like mabinogi books i like where they take stories from like the medieval welsh like Mabadoggy folk tales and they like modernize them and give them like a modern spin. So this is based on the story of Llyd and Llyvelis. It's like these two brothers, one of which I think ends up founding London. Um, and one of them lives in Britain and one of them lives in France because he's like married someone in France. And um, there's like all these plagues and stuff and like one of the brothers helps the other brother to like, you know, battle the plagues. Anyway. So they're giving it a modern spin and like it's like a dystopia it's like a it's like a near future dystopia where britain has been overrun by this like faceless like empire thing um and the only free states in the world are wales and pakistan <laughs> and like one of the brothers is like one of these like mobster type guys and he's like in charge of everything and the other brother like marries this like queen of pakistan um but the main character guy isn't any of these guys. The main character is like 
the the right hand man of the king or like the mobster guy he's like his pen you know um it, it's really good like i just love these things where they take like medieval like magical things and like give them uh, like modern equivalents you know anyway okay number five fifth best book of the year I'm gonna go with Things That Make the Heart Beat Faster by Jal Morais. Okay, so this one, the guy, the author is from Cardiff and the book, like it's um, a collection of short stories. They're all like super Cardiff, right? Like like really like Cardiff, like dialects, you know, things that people in Cardiff would say, like, you know, just like really Cardiff situations. And like all of the stories are so like genuinely authentically like placed, you know, like, it, they like perfectly capture like little snippets of the city and like how people would sort of like engage and like there's this one for this guy he's like um, a drug dealer and he's like about to beat up on this guy in the park or whatever and then like it just ends like wild you know like it, it ends in crazy ways that you don't expect but then afterwards you're like that ended perfect that was amazing you know I just really I feel like it's like really authentically written and like like well written and engaging and I just like blew through it. It was so good. Okay, so number four, fourth best book of the year. I'm gonna go with A Man Named Dalt by Jonathan Ames. So this one's like, you know, like noir, PI, LA sort of thing, you know? It's a guy, he's a PI in the daytime. Um, and he's like my favorite kind of PI. He's like the kind of PI that doesn't really wanna be a PI, you know? He's like, he's in it, you know, because he has to be in it. Um, and at night, he moonlights as a bouncer for, like, a, a massage parlor, you know, like, a special kind of massage parlor, like, the kind that gives happy endings. Um, and he, he normally, like, spends all his days and his nights or whatever with his dog, George, and that's his only people, you know, because he's a loner. Um, and then something happens one night at the massage parlor and a guy who's like attacking the girls he accidentally kills him right and this was not the guy you're supposed to kill like he's got like connections to so and so and so so now he's like in some shit and he's got to like go through figuring out exactly who he's killed and exactly what's going to happen with that and blah, blah blah but he's such a good character he's like my favorite character i think of the whole year he like the way he talks and like the noir sort of setting and everything it's just perfect. I absolutely loved this. If this was one in a series, like it's it's a standalone one, that's the only one. If it was one in the series, I would have read literally the whole series by now because I love the characters so much. Also, as a side note, nothing bad happens to the dog. The dog does not die, which is something that I always need to know before I read a book with a dog. Holy armpits, ass and balls. Okay. My last day for work for the next three weeks is tomorrow. I've been trying to contact people on my team. There's like five, six people on the team. I've been trying to contact them for several days now to say who's doing what, who's doing what part of my job while I'm gone. It's not a job you can just leave, okay? It's a job that really only I do. So, you know, to pass it on, someone needs to be taught by me how to do it. Like I can leave a document, but it, it's not the same, right? And this, like, while I'm gone, the university will still be open. Students will still be trying to contact me, especially because my job deals specifically with students who are having a personal crisis. It can't just be left. So I've been shouting into the ether, desperately trying to get a hold of people and not getting any response back. And I just thought, are we all dead? Turns out every single last one of them has COVID. Is the world ending? I feel like the world is ending. Okay, I've had a chat with uh, my friend in work who's like, it looks like basically the one other person who's part of the work team who's still working. Um, and I feel like uh, it'll be okay now. We're gonna have a chat tomorrow about some stuff. And while I don't want her to do all the things because that's stupid, um, at least she'll be the keeper of knowledge to then pass on and delegate. So I'm feeling better about it, but you know, what? fucked up way to leave before Christmas. Like, the world continues to frighten the fucking hell out of me two years after, like, the scariest thing. Do you know what I mean? It just keeps getting scarier. <laughs> is this, is this adulthood? Is this your 30s? Is this what being 30 is like? <laughs> like, the world is suddenly terrifying crippling anxiety and daily existential crises. <laughs>
<sighs> I need a drink, I think. Okay, number three, third best book of the year. I'm gonna go with My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. Like, I wanted to include a couple of Grady Hendrix ones in the list, but I was like, no, be strong, just do one, do the best one. I think this book hugely goes toward me getting more into horror this year. Um, it's about, okay, this uh, group of friends in the 80s, these like high school girls in the 80s, and um, they're like in a, a cabin or like a lake cabin or something, and um, one girl sort of disappears into the darkness, into the woods for ages, and they can't find her, um, and then when they finally find her, she's like not got her clothes on, and she's like all dirty, and she's like saying crazy shit. Turns out like she's possessed by like a demon or something, and her best friend is the only one who suspects that something's up. All the other girls are like glamoured by her or like, you know, tired of her or like, you know, abandoning her or whatever like she's the only one who's committed to like exercising the demon out of her friend and it's got like loads of like 80s nostalgia stuff like the characters are super good like it was just like a horror book but not so scary you know that it's like hard to take you know and it was like quite funny and like I don't know it's hard to describe Grady Hendrix sort of horror style unless you read it but it's it's exactly my style I think I just love Grady Hendrix so much and I'm so glad that he's in my life now. Okay, number two, second best book of the year, Hail Mary by Andy Weir. I listened to this one on audiobook this summer, just like in my parents' backseat when I went to visit them and just like lived in it for like, you know, 10 hours straight or whatever was like the length of the audiobook. So it's this guy like in a sort of near future where there's something happening to the sun there's something wrong with it it's like losing light losing energy losing warmth and they predict that over like 20 years or something it will literally kill the earth you know so they don't have that much time to figure out what's going on with it or to fix it so they do like this um this mission where they need to send someone into space to sort of like investigate this planet or whatever like a planet that's sort of similar to the sun like something similar is happening there so um they send this guy up there and it's going to take him like something like 10 years to get there or something like that so he's like got to go into a coma like in a frozen state to get there um and then he's got to figure out what's up with it get specimens and stuff send it all back and then come back himself he only has like enough fuel for this mission so basically it's it's damn near a suicide mission um and the two people that he's gone up with have died when he wakes up so he wakes up out of this like frozen state or whatever and there was something wrong with his coma stuff so he doesn't remember what's happening and he's got to sort of like piece together what happened over the course of the book so first he's got to like do his mission solve his mission but also try to remember how it is that he even got there in the first place and then also save the world so good like i was fucking gripped and like i've read like all of andy weir's ones now and i've i've loved them like the Martian was so good as well like his people in his books always have to like science the shit out of things like they're faced with like crazy problems and they've got to just like MacGyver that shit you know and I I love characters that are just basically MacGyver so whoever sits down first wins I was against Etta but then I won oh wow well, what's the prize you got then a bounce ball oh that one's a good one it's a sparkly one and it bounces really high. <sighs> okay, number one, best book of the year. Are you ready? In the Miso Soup by Ryu Murakami. So, this one is noir as well. Like, I think that's, like, been my year. Like, maybe the pandemic has changed me. It's made me more dark. But, like, these noir, like, dark, sort of, like, underbelly type books have really, like, hit me hard this year. So this one was written in Japanese originally, which is another thing that I absolutely loved this year. Japanese translation books, like weird Japanese stuff. But anyway, so uh, it's originally written in Japanese and it's about this guy named Kenji who advertises himself to like Americans and Australians and Canadians um, as like a tour guide for like the underbelly of Tokyo, like the sex shows and the bars and like the prostitutes and everything like that. Um, so this one guy, this American tourist, he comes to see him, he like takes him up on his services and he's like a really weird guy. He's like chubby and like things about him don't quite fit, you know, like his like skin is weird and he acts strangely and Kenji like he's like getting like he's getting the spookies you know he's giving him like weird vibes 
and then he takes him around and everything and he starts to realize that this guy is like he's a sociopath like some horrendous shit is going down but it like plays out really slow like slow building you know like is he crazy or is he just weird you know like is this gonna be okay am i gonna get murdered like <laughs> like that but then like you expect it to be this like horror thing or like this thriller or this noir type thing and i think in the end it's not about that at all it's actually like a really like sophisticated discussion and like commentary on like modern japanese society and how it relates to like you know pre pre-war japanese society like the differences you know also how that then relates to like western societies like um like europe and america and stuff like that like it 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 blew my mind how much it made me think about all these different things and how like like sophisticated it was like the discourse in the background um while also just like the fucking noir setting is just bang around so i mean like it just i just loved it so much <laughs> and i've heard though like i after i read this i was blown away and i went to look online about it and loads of the people who absolutely loved it found that Ryu Murakami's other books aren't really like that. They're more like, you know, your average horror. You know, like, there's just something about this book that people love. And it's it's like a one-off. It exists in the world all on its own. And you want more of it, but you can't have more. This is all there is. Okay, here we go. We got our top 10. Um, and the, these are the other ones. I don't know if you care about that. Top 20. These are the ones that almost made it in the top 10. Um, and these are the ones that were in my top 30. Um, I think it's pretty good. Like, there's loads of them, like, overall. The ones with the St. David flag next to them. Those are, like, Welsh ones. Um, and the ones with, like, the little, like, lobes are ones that were translated into English from another language. So, you know, I think this spread's pretty good this year. Aww. <laughs> oh, come on, picnic? Whoa. That's good, huh? I remember that. Oh, this was the first time I got one penny. Oh. Thank you. Thank. Thank. Mm -hmm.